Good evening and welcome to tonight's Guardian Live event. For those of you that do use Twitter, we'd love to hear from you during and after the show. Please use hashtag Guardian Live, but do keep your phones on silent. Now, please put your hands together and give a very warm welcome to tonight's guests. Thank you. Good evening. A very warm welcome to all of you for this very special Guardian Live event. I'm Rhiannon Jones, a sports and news presenter, and it's my absolute pleasure to introduce to you all tonight, although really he needs no introduction, does he, to football legend Gary Lineker. <laughs> Presenting match of the day, Gary Lineker is regarded as one of the greatest ever England strikers. By me. <laughs> and what's more, he holds still England's record for the most goals scored in a men's FIFA World Cup. And I'd like any of you to shout out how many that is, please. <laughs> I hear a 10 over there. Well done. 10 it is indeed. Good work. In fact, can you stand up because I can't see you in the crowd? Well done. That's brilliant. That deserves a round of applause. What's, what's your name? Harry Kane. <laughs> what? James. Well James. done, James. We're off to a good start. My eye's on you. If, as if that weren't enough, Gary has now written a book, which is why we're all gathered here tonight and to all of those that have joined us online. And that book is, of course, this. 50 times football changed the world. And that's why we're here this evening, to talk to Gary and Ivor Padil, his co-writer, who will also join us up on stage in just a moment, about this book. But we'd also like to hear from all of you, all of you in the audience here in London at the Royal Geographical Society, and all of you watching online around the world, we'd like to hear your questions. So when we get to you, if you're in the audience, if you could put your hand up and someone with a mic will come over to you, say your name, where you're from, your age, and then your question. Same for all of you watching online. If you could send your questions through using the Q&A app, Make sure you give your name, your age, and where in the world you're watching from, because I'd love to know who's watching and from where. Um, we're going to have plenty more exciting surprises for you, not just talking to Gary and Ivor. So rather than ruining those surprises, let's just begin, shall we? Absolutely. Gary. I had the pleasure of binge reading this yesterday, this book, mm. and it was not only interesting, inspiring, but I thought it was, it was really good fun. Why did you decide to write a book, particularly for young fans? Um, exactly for the reasons that you said. Um, and also, I think sometimes football gets an unfair press. You know, so there's always a looking for the negative stories and this and that. But, and, and the truth is that that football is a great power for good um, in many ways. And, and sometimes these stories don't necessarily get well reported, you know, but I think social media has changed that to a degree. Um, you, know, you see players, you know, visiting hospitals, sick children, doing amazing community work. The Premier League does loads of stuff along those lines as well. Um, and footballers do lots of, of, of good things. Um, so when, you know, we kind of, came up with this idea you know, between us. We thought it would be a really positive thing to do, A for football, and, and highlight some of the amazing things that, that football has achieved. Um, the hard thing was whittling it down to oh, 50. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think it, it's positive, and, and also, I think with the, with the change in things recently, with the positivity surrounding um, the, the Lionesses and their victory, that there's lots of stories. Um, two that involved uh, women or, or young girls, so um, I, which is which is something that's changed dramatically in my sporting lifetime. When I played, you would you know you wouldn't see, hardly see a female face in the crowd, um, except my mum used to come. <laughs> um, 
Uh, so, but now that, that's dramatically changing, and it, it was even before the, the European Championship success, but that's now escalated, and, and so many more uh, women are going to watch football, and young girls are playing, which is, which is great, because you know, football has been the one ever present in my life. And the football mum not to be underestimated. Mm. I'm sure everyone would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, long live the football mum at the sideline. Mm. Uh, and what inspired you as a child to play football? Oh, I wish I could remember. <laughs> it's so long ago. Um, I've played since I, before I can even remember, since I was kind of that high as, as lots, of, um, lots of us did back then. I played with my brother in the garden when I was really little, and then I just loved it. Um, and that's the thing about you know, football that you know, people talk about often the money involved and this and that, but that's not why you play. You, know, you, play, you, you play because... Well, it, it's, a, it's, it's a bonus that comes along with being successful, but you play for the love of the game, and, it's, and it's, just, it's just a joy to play, and whatever level you do reach, you can still enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've played all my life, I, until I've obviously retired, and then now I can't play because I can't run very fast. But. That's okay, you've got another job of you, it's doing all right. <laughs> um, you mentioned the love of the game, and it, it really is a beautiful game, and it, it's so remarkable how powerful football is, mm. which comes across in your book. Yeah. What makes it so powerful and uniting for the force of good? Well, I think it's such a global game for a start, so it, therefore it has massive influence. Um, it's, it's, it's a huge sport. Um, it's, it's influential. It's, it's important in people's lives. It can be tribal. Uh, it is very tribal. Um, so, and, and I think that, and I think because of how big it is, it carries with it a certain amount of, of power and influence. And, and, and often it's used for good. And, and I think there's a reflection, definitely a reflection of that in the book. It there are some, some, yeah. you know, some amazing stories that in the research for it, I, I, I wasn't aware of myself until we came across them. You know. So, um, yeah, I think so. And I think um, because it is just the global sport, it, yeah. has, you know, it has that impactfulness. Um, that perhaps uh, some other sports don't have. Mm. And you mentioned the research there. How did you go about researching all these mm. remarkable stories? Uh, well, let Ivor do it, really. <laughs> I'll meet you in a minute. But no, um, but no between, we talked about, you know, we had lots of meetings about this story, that story. Does this one make it? Does that one make it? This was really great. This is amazing. And, you know, the, the, so it was... Because when, when we first had the idea, I thought... 50 times football changed. I'm not sure we can get that, that, that the, the powerful nature of a, that many stories, surely. But then it really? came quickly obvious yeah. that it would be way more. Yeah. Um, so maybe this time next year we'll have the next yeah, set of best 50, <laughs> including England's triumph in the World yeah. Cup in Qatar. Yeah, come on. <laughs> um, and throughout the book, you mention these Game Changer Awards. Talk us through those. I particularly like that section. That you know, throughout the book, there's yeah. this thread of of awards that Gary Lineker and I yeah. sort of g give to people who. Yeah, I'm not sure we actually they actually get an award. Well, no. And they might they're want the, they might want one at some point. But no, they're just yeah little things um, throughout the book. Um, oh, I'm trying to think off, off top top of my head now. There was um, there was Green Forest you, Rovers. You, Green Forest Rovers for the sustainability of their stadium, and they're totally vegan, and they're really great for climate. Um, and, and obviously, the climate change is, is something that's been important for for me, um, and what we've got to do for the future of, of a lot of the youngsters in this yeah. room. Um, so that was well, there was even things like the Cruyff Turn. We thought mm -hmm. we deserved an, yeah. a, a little award um, because to get something named after yourself was, was quite special. And he was also someone I played under at Barcelona. Mm -hmm. So and so there are a number of these awards scattered in the broad, and there are other bits where I have, a, I have my little comment in a balloon and there's nice little kind of Your thoughts. slightly unflattering drawings of, of me in the book. But. I think maybe I perhaps should find yeah. one to show everyone now that you've it's, mentioned my it. Picture's better. I wasn't my going picture's to. on the front is better oh. than... I, Ivor's picture's on the back, and he looks like Rafa Benitez. <laughs> Can't find Ivor. No, it's not bad at all, Ivor. I meant it in a nice way. You'll be able to judge for yourselves. Rafa be Benitez is thrilled. <laughs> um, Gary, a certain tale from the 2015-16 
campaign. Well, I mean, that's my favourite story. Must have got story. a mention. Um, that's my favourite story. In fact, I remember when we first sat down, and, and well, actually, I think it was over Zoom because it was during the pandemic. I think when we first had the, the, the Zoom, um, and we went, right, the 50 best times Czech football changed the world, I went, right, Leicester City winning the league. <laughs> That, I, that, that had, to, had to be in. I mean, that was, I mean, it's, I genuinely believe this, not just because I'm a Leicester fan, that it was, yeah. it was the greatest team sporting miracle of all time. Anyway, yeah. it, just, it just couldn't happen. It, it was impossible what happened to Leicester that year. And it was, I, it was so emotional. Um, and I, because I was doing, obviously I did Match of the Day and I, I, I also did the silly tweet that I said I'd do the first show of the next season in just my undies if Leicester won the league. But I knew when I tweeted we that... We all remember that, that don't we? Uh, I, I do. Perhaps um, some, are, some are too young in the audience to yeah. have been able to watch that. Yeah, thankfully. I watched the repeat, though, <laughs> Sunday morning. So I, rem I, and I remember when I tweeted it, I thought, that, well, I can tweet that because there's a categorically zero chance that Leicester will ever win the league. And then three of my four boys... Um, grown up now, but they all support Leicester as well. And towards the latter stage of the season, when it started to be possible, <laughs> and that's not a thing, this can't happen. And then we watched, we watched all the games because they were all shifted to a Sunday, mm. so, which was great because then I, I could just do much of the day, then get back home, watch the yeah, game. Enjoy. And they kept, they won 1 0, then they won 1 0, then they won 2 0, then they won. It was like, oh my God, what's happening? Mm. This can't happen. And I, Did you then start going down to the gym? Working out frantically. I, was, I, I do that anyway. I do, I, I do that anyway. I, I, I did actually starve myself for two days before, I think. Um, so I didn't really. It's a joke. Um, so I was, um, so then, then it became really towards the end. But the closer it got to the fact that it now should happen, the more terrifying it was that it might not. Hmm. And I, I, I remember when it did actually happen and, and it was, Leicester weren't playing, it was um, Tottenham, were play, yeah. Tottenham were the only team that could be in, which was a shame that it was the other side, that I, <laughs> one of my other sides, but um, they were playing at Chelsea and then Tottenham were two up, we thought, oh, it's, we're still going to blow it, we're never going to, and then obviously Hazard bent that one in to make it 2-2 two, two in the top corner and I just broke down in tears, it still gets me now. And all my boys, and we're all hugging, and it was, it was just, Don't just cry again. beautiful. No, I do. I, every time I think of it, I cry. Oh. If ever I'm an actor and I need to cry, I'll think You'll of that. You'll think of that. It just works. <laughs> just have their thing, works don't they? Every time. Well, thank you, Gary. Yeah. Um, just very quickly, which current footballer do you consider to be inspirational? Because you mention a few in your book, current footballers. Yeah. And we've been lucky enough to see quite a few, I think, mm. of late. Well, one or two of them get mentioned in the book. Obviously, Marcus Rashford, for what, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking about things, he's in, he obviously features for what he's done for, you know, feeding children in schools yeah. and stuff, which, you free know. Free school meals. Free school meals, which summer. seems amazing that we rely on a footballer to do that, but um, nevertheless. Um, in fact, I've been really proud of, of our current crop of footballers. They've been amazing. Yeah. You know, you look at, like, Henderson get the, getting the captains together at the start of the pandemic and raising loads of money for the NHS. You got Raheem Sterling with, you know, those kind of racial issues and stuff, and, and Marcus Rashford with the food, and and they've just been great. And yeah. you know, even today I saw a, a, there was a, a video online of Harry Kane going to a school and talking to all the kids about, you know, adversity and and how you thrive through things like that. So footballers do a lot of good. They do. And it's, it's worth, worth mentioning them. Yeah. Um, but, if, you know, if you talk about inspiring in terms of actual footballers at the moment, then we're blessed, aren't we? We've got so we many are. great players. We are. We're very lucky yeah. at the moment. Um, well, your book includes some unforgettable stories, as mm. we've been talking about, that have changed the game and sometimes the world forever, quite honestly. I mean, it really is mm. very inspiring. Um, moving book, as well as being a lot of fun. Mm. Which is your favourite? story. Well, apart from Leicester. Apart from, yeah. Apart from Leicester. That. There was a story in there that I didn't know about that I've, I've discovered of, a, of a, a, a young team that played on the sea in Thailand. I know this sounds ridiculous, but they loved football so much that they had no one to play and they built like a, a, like a wooden floating mm. Thing that had like wooden nails, and they all ended up with like splinters. splinters and nails in their feet and stuff. And they became a really good team. I think probably playing away there was really difficult <laughs> for, for the opposition. But I just thought that was such a, an amazing story about how much people want to play football. Yeah. 
And I, I think that was probably my other favourite. And, um, and of course, um, the Lioness is as well. We've got yes, but back. we've mentioned women's football. Yeah. But you, you yeah. do mention a lot. In fact, I was quite surprised, mm. pleasantly surprised, Good. about how many inspira inspirational women's mm. teams and women yeah. um, that are in yeah, the book, like, which is a yeah, great Yeah, there's lots of good stories in there of, of women country. trying to... Yeah. You know, no, it's great to see. Um, well, thank and Megan Rapinoe and people like yeah, that. Yeah, a lot of mentions mm. in there. So, um, Gary, thank you. Pleasure. Um, it wouldn't have been possible without your co-writer, Ivor Badil, who I'd like to welcome to the stage now. <laughs> Warm welcome to Ivor. Oh, yeah. who, no. who did you say you looked like, Gary? No, oh, he uh, Benitez. Well, he doesn't. Rafa Benitez. Benitez. He, does, he, does, he, does, he does in the drawing. Does, does he look like Rafa Benitez? Rafa Benitez. Rafa Benitez. Yes. Yeah, got one there you yes go. there. <laughs> Believe you me, there's someone else you might know who I look a lot like yeah. as well and sound like. <coughs> anyway. Ivor, well done. Football. It's a hello. It's a great book. I really enjoyed it. Gary and I were both. I, I can't wait to read it to my two boys when they're slightly mm. older. Um, what, what was it like working with Gary? I don't know why I'm saying that with a wry smile, but you know, give us a little yeah. bit of. Oh, it was awful. Detail. It was absolutely awful. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah. It was great. You know, <clears throat> unusually for footballers, Gary is actually quite intelligent and, and erudite. Oh. <laughs> um, so, as we well know. So, no, it was great. You know, he's full of ideas and, and we knock stuff back and forth. The truth is, he did all the work. He's basically the new Peter Beardsley. He does all the work. <laughs> you get the, the glory. End, and then I get the glory by knocking it in. No, not to actually, not. to be honest, <laughs> Shared glory. Look, what, you, Gary, what you see is what you get. Gary is actually a very laid back guy. And it was actually very easy. As, you know, celebrities can be quite difficult, can't they? Yeah. But Gary, Gary is not difficult. He's very easy going. So it was, it was a joy. <laughs> Shut is up. that it? Oh, come on. What do you want me to say? I'll get Give us some juicy gossip. He's crying, he's crying again. again. Talk about Leicester again. again. No, I don't. <laughs> okay, so which was your favourite? I know, I keep on putting you both on the yeah. spot, but which yeah. was your favourite moment or story from the book? Well, can I just say one thing? Before... Hello, we're being filmed. Hello. Um, yes, before I answer that question, I, I knew you were going to ask that, because I was told that. And I thought they meant, what was my favourite football <laughs> moment in my life? And so when I gave an answer, when I was seven, like, my mother sent me to school with appendicitis. Like, she didn't know I had appendicitis. I terrible pain. You know, in all sorts of pain. She said, oh, go to the toilet and sort yourself out. <laughs> so anyway, I ended up going to school. I collapsed at school. I had appendicitis. I was operated on that night. I was off school for a month. When I came back to school, I was seven, eight, or whatever, I still remember being in the playground, scoring a goal yeah. with a tennis ball. And I was so happy. I was back. You know? And that's where his football career peaked. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, well so, done, Ivor. And you your favourite moment in the book? In the book. <laughs> but it's very hard to narrow it down. I'm going to go for two, possibly even yeah. three. But you could shut yeah. me up if I'm talking too long. Um, so I like the, I love, what I love about the book is there's like huge, huge moments and yeah. slightly smaller ones. So there's a story about a guy called Bradley Barr who's a 16-year-old referee, and he refereed this game for an under-seven uh, girls team in Lancashire, and it was freezing, freezing cold. And one of the girls, who was only six, he, Bradley noticed that she was really cold, so he took off his gloves and he gave her the gloves. Right, and that had such a big impression on her. I think there was a photographer there. It got a bit of national press, um, but it made such an impression. Her, that girl's first experience of football was so positive that hopefully it will then go on and, you know, she'll, because of that, she'll have a lifelong love of football. So that kind of shows how a tiny little thing can change someone's world. Um, the other thing I'm going to mention is Maradona's handball. Because oh, we all know that Gary was there, right? What you might not know is that I was there. Incredibly. It I, 50 times football changed my world. It, well, yeah. Time, <laughs> but I was there. I, I went to the 1986 World Cup in Mexico. So did uh, I. Yes. <laughs> I, d I didn't see him there, but he was somewhere on the pitch. It, I loved being there, but I was in the, in the Azteca Stadium in the stand. And we could see, we could see that Maradona mm. punched the ball in the net. The referee couldn't. But the great thing, researching it more, as you'll find out when you read the book, the effect that had of Maradona doing that, the effect it had in Argentina, they felt that they'd beaten England twice. Once by being crafty, once by being brilliant. Yeah. And they, they yeah. loved that. Yeah, they loved true. that in Argentina. And I think the cultural difference, if, yeah. if an English-British player had, had done that by cheating, they'd be vilified. 
Whereas in Argentina, they, yeah. they loved him. Mm -hmm. So I, quite, I, lo I love the contrast between that massive event and the I think and the his little. second goal helped. It, was, it, it did, did help a little bit, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That, that was pretty special. Oh. Yes. Um, thank you. I know it's tough to choose. Um, I'm going to hand you all over to the capable hands of Ivor, in fact, now, because... Um, Iva, you're going to take it away, and you've got a very special guest coming up on stage as well who makes an appearance in the book. Yes. We've got one of the stars of the book here with us in the auditorium. Iva, we, over to you. We have, and this person appears in, the, in, in Gary's introduction, so I'm just going to read the introduction. And Gary says, <coughs> excuse me, I've been lucky enough to see some of the most incredible and inspiring moments in football, from being on the pitch when the infamous Maradona punched the ball into the net to witnessing such young rising football stars as Imogen Papworth Heidel performing more than one million keepy-uppies to raise money for charity in 2020. Well, one of those two people is here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can work out who it is. So please welcome Imogen Papworth Heidel. So, as you might have heard me say, Imogen raised a lot of money for charity. So, Imogen, how did that all come about? Um, so, in 2020, during lockdown, I was inspired by Captain Tom, who was on the news walking around the garden. Yeah, I um, remember. His 100 laps, which was really inspiring. And I thought that I wanted to show my thanks to the, NH to the NHS and all the key workers who are in the country. And I decided to do one key up for every single key worker in the country. That's incredible. Uh, how many key workers were there? Uh, 7.1 million. <laughs> 7.1. That's a lot of keep you up. <laughs> My record's eight. <laughs> and I just want to, I asked you this earlier, but before you'd, you attempted your record, how many keep you up is, had you done? What was your record? Um, my record was 20 <laughs> when I <laughs> that, started. It was 20, that's incredible. And when you did it, what was the reaction? Um, so after I'd completed it, it was like mixed emotions. So I was quite relieved that I didn't, um, it didn't take 97 years to complete the challenge. <laughs> right. um, but then it was also, um, I'd, I'd missed the fact that I'd meet so many amazing people. Who, who did you meet? Um, so I met the Lioness squad. Wow. Um, and uh, I was tweeted a couple of times by Guy Lineker, which I was really, really happy about. Right. Well, that's <laughs> Most him. people don't like that when I do that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I, I met, um, I went on Martin and Roman Kemp's um, show Great. Um, a while back, and which was really, really interesting, which Fantastic. is really fun. Who counted them all for you? My parents. Come on, blimey. <laughs> wow. And how much, finally, how much money did you raise? Um, we raised £23,000 in total. Wow. That's fantastic. <laughs> And you might have seen that Imogen's got a ball with her. Yeah. So would you mind doing a few keepy-uppers for us now? Oh, yeah, I'll oh, try. Thank you. No pressure. Yeah. No. It's like seven. when you sign for Barcelona, you have to do that. It's horrendous. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. It's more That's than my record. It's beat my record, that. I, I, I remember going on the pitch at Barcelona when they, have to, they do this hideous thing where they say, you've got to do some tricks. Yeah. And I thought, I haven't got any tricks. <laughs> they do yeah. keepy uppers. I went, I've never practised keepy uppers. I can't, can't even try and knock it in the net. So I went, did you do? I went, I went like this. I went, dump, dump, cap, cool to <laughs> Do you <even> catch? <laughs> and then oh. volleyed it in the crowd. Well done. That's amazing, oh. Imogen. Yes, thank you, Imogen. Imogen. Into the quiz. Amazing. That was really good. Yeah, let's yes. do the quiz. Okay, quiz. So now we've got a quiz, uh, and also people online can do the quiz as well. Okay, so the way it's going to work, the questions will come up here. All the answers are in the book. Okay, <laughs> cleverly, by, <laughs> really by coincidence. Um, online. <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking for online, but uh, if you're doing it online, you have to drop the answers into the Q and A box. Okay, so you, the questions will come up here. There's four options. Okay, don't, don't shout them out. I'll read out the question and the options, and then we'll go, who thinks it's A, 
put your hand up, who thinks it's B, C, and so on, and then I'll try and gauge which answer has got the most hands. Okay, are we ready? Yes. Okay, hopefully, hopefully this will work. Oh, look at that. With, with Ivan Benil and the book. And the, no, there's no ball. Okay, here we go. Okay, so how many people, and this is on television, not in the stadium, watched the last Women's World Cup? So just to, if, don't, no, don't put your hands up yet. Um, so if you remember, it was in 2019 in France. Uh, America won, they beat the Netherlands 2-0 in the final. That isn't going to help you guess how many people watched it, but so the, the global TV audience, okay? So we'll go through the answers first and then you put hands up after, okay? So was it A, 9.6 million? Don't put your hands up yet. <laughs> was it B, 400 million? Was it C, 1.2 billion? Or was it D, 71 million? So anyone watching online, drop your answer into the Q&A box now. And in the room, put your hands up if you think it's A. A couple of people, not many. Hands up if you think it's B. A few more, good, okay. Hands up if you think it's C, 1.2 billion. Oh, it's really hard to gauge. I think so far it's B. Uh, hands up if you think it's D, 71 million. Okay, that's, that's clear, isn't it, Gary? So most people in the room think it's D. What, what do they think online? Online still thinking. Still thinking. <laughs> Just says online thinks. Okay. Still like that. <laughs> oh, D. They think it's D as well. D. Okay, well, let's find out. The answer Should we see what Gary Lineker thinks? Oh, yes, what does Gary Lineker Well, he knows it's in the book, don't you? I know. Yeah, well, you never know. Let's test it. I, okay. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> Just saying. Gary Lineker, Gary Lineker, what do you think? What do you think? Is it A, B, C, or D? <laughs> <laughs> I think the truth is that it's impossible to say accurately how many people watched on television. Actually, this Gary, is a constant myth. No, they can tell quite accurately now. So, A, B, C, or D? Yeah, um, C. Oh, that's an interesting that's, guess. That, sorry, that sounds like Gary Lineker might like to be a politician for his it's next very career. Good, yeah. move. Oh, God, no thanks. <laughs> I, I would vote for him. Mm. OK. A, B, C, or D, the answer is C. Oh! So. That's a good guess. <laughs> well done, Gary, and well done, everyone. Well, it's, you you know, it's always in the billions, isn't it? But that's amazing. That's the most, the biggest. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the book we've talked about, there's a lot of women's football in the book, and that just shows how women's football has grown in the last few years. It's incredible, and I imagine that figure will be even more in 2023. Okay, so here we go. Question two. One of the longest questions ever written. And we may have talked about this earlier. I know this one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which Premier League footballer convinced the government to provide free school meals to children for families who needed extra support during the 2020 uh, summer holidays? Was it A, Jamie Vardy from Leicester Player? Was it B, Marcus Rashford, Manchester United? Any Man U fans in? A few. Any Leicester fans in? Oh, oh, oh. Good. blimey. <laughs> Hello. Some, some, some quite old children there. <laughs> so uh, usual. Harry Kane, Tottenham and England captain. Any Tottenham yeah. fans in? Yeah. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> and C, like Jack Tottenham Grealish, well. Man City. Any City fans in? Yeah. A few, yeah. Okay, so online, drop your answer in the Q&A box now. Who thinks it's A, Jamie Vardy? Not even the Leicester fans. Uh, Not even Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Uh, certainly not. No. Um, uh, who thinks it's B, Marcus Rashford? Yes. Oh, all right. Uh, C. Who thinks it's C, Harry Kane? Who thinks it's D, Jack Grealish? No. What are they saying online, Rihanna? <laughs> they're still thinking. No, they're not. B. I think we know. I think we know this one. Yeah. It is, of course, Marcus, Rash Marcus Rashford, um, who. In 2020, joined up with a charity called Fair Share because during the pandemic, um, a lot of children who got would normally get free school meals at school. Obviously, they weren't at school, so they didn't get the free school meals. So, together with this charity, 
uh, Mark has put pressure on the government and it worked. It was fantastic. I think it was something like 1.4 million children got meals mm. and then they carried it on, I think, to the following summer holidays and the following Easter holidays. So fantastic work there from... Still going. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, Brilliant. Yeah, Thank you. Going. So, yeah, that was, that was great from Marcus. Here we go for the next one. Even longer question. Crikey. In 2014, Khalida Papal set up the Girl Power Organisation to support refugees, immigrants and migrants using the power of sport. Today, Girl Power has projects in Denmark, Jordan, Afghanistan, Germany, Turkey, Greece and Pakistan. But which country was Khalida born in? Oh, right, tricky, tricky. Uh, here we go. Is it A, Germany, B, Turkey, I'm not going to cheat. C, Afghanistan, or D, Jordan? Let's have a little think. Right, hands up. Hands up who thinks it's A, Germany. Oh, where? Few. Hands up who thinks it's B, Turkey. A few more. Who thinks it's C, Afghanistan? Quite a lot. And who thinks it's D, Jordan? A oh, fair few. Rhiannon, what are they saying online? C. They're saying C. Okay, let's find out. The answer is C, Afghanistan. <laughs> Very well good. I love the I, fact that you're applauding I, yourself. You've stopped testing Gary. Oh, I forgot. Sorry. It's all right. I see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's find out if you're right. <laughs> yes, Khalida Papal was a, an Af Afghan... Uh, footballer. She set up the first Afghan women's team. Unfortunately, she had to leave Afghanistan because of uh, the Taliban and problems there, so she had to escape. And she ended up in Denmark, um, where she set up this girl power organisation. <clears throat> and, and I think it was in 2021, when the Taliban came to power again, she helped uh, a lot of Afghan uh, female athletes to get out of Afghanistan and they escaped to Melbourne where I think the Afghan women's team are now training and hoping to play I believe um, so question four I think we're on to now, there are six by the way here we go, shortest question in the world um, who's home who, which football team plays at Loftus Road okay is it is it A Fulham <laughs> it might be. B, Queen's Park Rangers. Oh. <laughs> C, Arsenal. D, Chelsea. <clears throat> well, I think we know. <laughs> Who thinks it's A? Who thinks it's B? C. There's a gentleman D. at the back who thinks it's C. Oh, good. Who thinks it's D? Gary. <laughs> Gary, what do you think? I... I, I, I... I played on the plastic pitch there. Oh, wow. When it used to curl up at the edges, it was so it was horrible there at Loftus Road. Yeah. You, you do complain about the pitches a lot in the book. Well, that's because pitches in my day were rubbish. Yeah. That's the one thing I'm really envious about now. But it was yeah, QPR. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, online. Uh, B. Yes. Well, let's see. <laughs> Hooray! The answer was QPR. Yes. Yeah. Okay. On to question five. Oh, this, is, this is an interesting one. So, Don, the worst team in Britain at one time, how many goals did Madron FC from Cornwall lose by during the 2010-11 season? And just to be clear, so this team, they lost every single game in this season, but there was one particular game was their heaviest defeat. Okay, so what was their heaviest defeat during that season? Was it A, 55-0? <laughs> was it... B, 100 nil. <laughs> Can't be 100. C, 9 nil. Or D, 46 nil. So have a little think. Online, drop, you drop your answer in the Q&A box. Do you remember? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't think it's in, it's in the box. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, it's that one. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I remember. Um, I can't remember how the score. Right. Who... Who thinks it's A, 55 nil? Well, quite a few, okay. Who thinks it's B, 100 nil? <laughs> Two, I think. Uh, C, 9 nil? No one. Or D, 46 nil? Oh, 
That's definitely the, yeah. the winner in the room. Rhiannon, what are they saying online? Online are saying C. Nine nil. Nine nil. Nine nil. That's, that's not. I mean, right. they need to read the book. Liverpool do that every time they play Crystal Palace or yeah. something. <laughs> um, um, Gary, what do you I think? Can't, I, I can't remember. No. <laughs> but I, it can't be 100. You can't score a goal more than one a minute. I mean, that would be ridiculous. Well, there is another oh, there story is another in the book story, where they yeah. do. There is another <laughs> the own goal story. Yeah, but, but that's, that's yeah, different. But that's, that's slightly different. different, yeah. yeah um, I, that's I, a tease I, for the book. A. It's a good story. Gary's gone for A. I can't remember. It's annoying me. Shall we find out? It is A. Oh. <laughs> um, well yes. I'm flagging. But the, the reason that's in the book is Madrid FC were a very inspiring team. Yeah. They, they lost every single game that season. But every week... A bit like Leicester this season. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't give up. They still, every week they turned up, they kept losing... That was the worst defeat, but I think they lost 25-0. They, they did certainly lost 9-0. They lost every single game, but they still turned up they, because they loved playing. They did it because they loved playing. And the following season, I think it was either their first game or their second game, the following season, they actually won a game, 4-3. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but but their, you know, their dedication you know, kept paid off eventually. So it's, the story there is, you know, don't give up. You, you'll get there eventually. Um, I'm not that familiar with Cornish teams, lower league <laughs> Cornish teams. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's in the book. Buy the book, you'll find out. Um, OK, I think this is the last yeah. question. OK, this is quite easy, I guess. Uh, this one is... You can is read this our, quick. <laughs> it's a game changer. So in the, as, as Gary and Rhiannon, Rhiannon were saying, throughout yeah. the book there are game changer awards. And this is the last one in the book. Uh, and it, it, it's given to the current manager of the England team. So is that person Wayne Rooney? <laughs> is it Frank Lampard? Could be. Is it Roy Hodgson? Or is it Gareth Southgate? <laughs> Gary, any ideas? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, online, drop, drop your answers in the box now, please. Uh, who thinks it's A? Who thinks it's B? Who thinks it's C? Oh, there's somebody thought it was... We had one for B, was that? Yeah. Who thinks yeah. it's C? I think there are a couple of Cs. <laughs> Who thinks it's D? Hooray! <laughs> what are they saying online? You don't need to ask, really, do you? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the answer is D, D. Gareth Southgate. Yeah. Um, but the reason he's in the book, apart from being a, a great manager and a you know, pretty good player, um, in the 1996 European Championships, which were here, um, oh God, was it the semi-final? Yeah, England played Germany. Germany uh, they went to penalties. Uh, and Gareth Southgate stepped up, he took a penalty, and it was saved. Uh, and then the Germans scored the next penalty. And England were out of the tournament and lost the game because of that. And he's talked about it. He's talked about it a lot, how it affected him. Um, he got a lot of hate mail, but he also got a lot of supportive uh, male as well and you know he's ta he talks a lot about how that affected him coming back from that picking himself up from that where at one time he felt like the most hated person in the country so actually that's a story about mental health and there is a couple of chapters about mental health as well in the book um, so that's why Gareth Southwick, Southwick gets the award um, right now be honest now who got all six right not that many, actually. Okay. Well, well, well done to, well done to those who did. Our superstar James at the back did. There's one well. superstar at the back there. And do we know online if people got all, right, all six right? Oh, mm, they're still thinking. <laughs> still thinking. Okay. Well, well done, everybody, and thank you for taking part. Ivor, thank you very much. That was great fun. And well done to the audience. good warm-up for you all because I'm now going to throw it over to you. This is the time where you are super keen ones here. This is the time where you get to join in and ask your questions to either Gary or Ivor. Um, so if you're in the audience, put your hand up, please, and someone with a mic will come over to you. Don't forget to say your name, your age, and where you're from if you fancy it. 
Um, and online, this is your moment too. We'd really like some from you as well. So please join in. Uh, they're with still the on question Q&A. five. <laughs> they are, they're still thinking. <laughs> Q&A app, name, age, and where in the world you're watching, because I really want to know how far flung you are. So I'm going to start with an online question. Um, and some have been, are oh, being, being typed as I speak. So Sophia, age six, from Wimbledon, not that far away, asks Gary, what advice can you give me to help me score more goals? Just hang around in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Works quite well. Um, no, I, I, I think the best advice I can, I can give for that is, 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 is genuinely just guess where the ball's going to go. And you keep guessing where it's going to go and run at that space. And then eventually the ball will go there and you'll have a really easy chance. I know that sounds simple, but that, I based a career on it. <laughs> you just, you just, you just, you just, before, as they're about to cross the ball or pass the ball, you just go at a space. Fast as you can. And then if it goes there, tap in. If it doesn't, it might do the next time. Simple as that. That's the secret of scoring goals. There it's, you go, it's, 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 it's gambling. Take a gamble. Yeah. Run as fast as you can. Uh, thank you, Gary. And good luck, Sophia. Let us know how you get on. Mm. Question from the audience, then. Yeah, yeah. Over there. Let us know your name, your age, where you're from, and then your question, and who it's for as well. Um, I'm Sam, and I'm nine. I'm from London. And my question is, since you've never got a booking or a red card, do you think there's been a tackle when you should have got one? <laughs> Um, well, between me and you, <laughs> I never tackled anyone. Um, um, yeah, well, I think if, the, if I was playing today, it would be impossible to go through my whole career without a yellow or red card because the law changes and all this strange you know, things now. You just, and I think they're good rule changes in, in terms of... Like, you, you, know, you pretty much had to commit grievous bodily harm to get a, a yellow card <laughs> when I played and I got, you know, I was kicked around a lot, but I didn't have a temper, but I've had a few yellow and red cards since I finished. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, I was like, yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't really have a temper, but if I played now, you, I, would, I would get one for a, you know, you get them for like just handball or accidentally clipping someone's ankles and stuff, so it's, it's changed a lot. Uh, great question, by the way. Love it. Our next online question is from Sam, aged 11, from Bath, asks... Oh, I was really hoping from somewhere really far away. But anyway, my away. question is, what was your favourite part of playing football for England? Just I'm for assuming either. this is for yeah, you. Yeah, I going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Best part of playing for... Well, I, I just think, firstly, it's, it's indescribable how proud you are when you pull on that shirt, particularly for the first time. Um, it's amazing because you, your name changes. Because it was, you know, it was Gary Lineker, Leicester. Gary Lineker, Leicester. And then suddenly it was Gary Lineker, Leicester and England. And it's really special, especially when you play in a big tournament. Um, and, you know, then you go out there and the, the anthem plays. And, it's, and, and especially when it goes well, it's, it's just amazing. It's the, be it's the, you know, it's the best thing um, to represent your country. And... It makes you incredibly proud. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I love that. Uh, right, another question from the audience over here. Oh, could we have them from children, please? Thank you. No offence. Kids only. It's a kids' book. <laughs> hey, sorry. Oh, we've got one here, I think. <laughs> we've got one. Oh, there's one here. Oh. Yes. Um, this is for both of you. Um, my name's Coco and I'm 12 and I'm from London and my question is, as a child, did you have an idol or someone you looked up to and if not then, do you have one now? Gary. Both for both of Thank you. you. No, that, he was my idol. No. <laughs> he wasn't. <laughs> I'd say that. <laughs> Good answers. Good Who was it either? Seriously. Did you have it? Well, uh, not that I'm doubting you. you be a Chelsea player, aren't you? No, yeah, my, I, I'm a Chelsea fan. Any, any, Osgood? No, it wasn't Peter Osgood, because I started going to Chelsea when I was about 13, which was about 1976. But, and it was, it was horrible then. 
But my favourite ever player was Pat Nevin, who is on, on uh, yeah, Pat, telly and yeah, radio a bit. Yeah. Just because... So, so, so I'm a bit long-winded, as I know, but I remember my father telling me about the greats when he was, a, was younger, you know, Tom Finney, Stanley Matthews and what have you. And obviously they were great players, but I didn't have that personal connection with him like, like my father did. So for me, growing up, it, Pat Nevin, I, I loved him. Such a, yeah. I'm sure Gary will agree, such a skillful player, particularly at a time when Chelsea were rubbish. He stood out and mm. I loved how skillful he was. Um, so as a footballer, mm. Coco, it was, it was yeah. Pat Nevin. I had two, because I was, I was obviously a Leicester fan growing up, watched him from when I was seven. Um, one was Frank Worthington, who yeah, wow. sadly <laughs> died not long ago. Um, it was amazingly skillful, wonderful, centre forward, everything I wasn't. And then the other one was Pete Shilton, who I watched in the first game I ever saw, which was Leicester against Manchester United. And he was unbelievably brilliant. And he made all these saves. And he became my hero. I then, what, seven, seven, about 18 years later, I made my debut for England with Peter Shilton. Wow. Oh, wow. And, and the weird thing is I then roomed with him for eight years of my England wow. career, was always roomed with Peter Shilton, who's my hero. I retired and Peter Shilton played for another 10 years <laughs> after that in professional football. He played well into, into his 50s. Um, it was incredible, but true, true. Well, d- well just to team? put that into context, I, I was, once yeah, got into a cab. Yeovil, I, I, was, I used to... I was lucky enough to go to the Chelsea Brilliant. Player of the Year Brilliant. Awards Brilliant. a few years ago, and a slightly worse for where Pat Nevin bunked yeah. into the cab I was in with me. Really? So, so I go, yes. Same thing, really. It's exactly the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. uh, so, uh, Ivor, I know you were worried oh, that no one was going to ask you questions, but this oh, one's hello. from, this is an online one for Great. you. Great. Can you give an example from the book about a positive change in relation to diminishing discrimination, whether that's racism, homophobia, oh, uh, anti Semitism? There's absolutely I mean, there loads. loads. I mean, we do yeah. a whole chapter. It's called Tremendous Tackling, which is you know, people and organisations have tackled various issues, like you say, racism, anti, anti-Semitism, all sorts of things. So there's one of the chapters is devoted to groups like Kick It Out, um, Show Racism of the Red Card and things like that, and how they came about roughly in the late 90s. Um, there's particularly close to my heart, I'm Jewish, and um, I was involved in a campaign like 12 years ago now to to try and combat anti-Semitism in football. And we made a short film, which Gary, bless him, yeah. genuinely has done, agreed, no, has agreed to be in, which I was, you know, deeply grateful about. So, I mean, I, I, yes, I mean, I, I hope we cover... I mean, there's other examples as well of, of organisations. I mean, Kalida Papal's organisation yeah. is doing great work with refugees and migrants and what have you. Um, there's, a, there's a very good story... Oh, God... Um, is it show races in the red card where the oh, Shaka Hislop mm. right? Shaka Hislop uh, was the goalkeeper for Newcastle in the 90s <clears throat> and he was he was at a petrol station filling up his car and he received some racial abuse from some kids uh, from a distance and then I think one of them got a bit closer and realised who he was mm. and suddenly went yeah. oh it's Shaka Hislop the Newcastle goalkeeper can I have your autograph or whatever and in, in that moment he realised the sort of power that, that footballers could have, yeah. particularly to change those sort of things in the game. So he was instrumental in setting up show racism, the red card. Mm. Um, so, that, yeah, there's, there's a story. But, but like there's a lot say, of... I mean, the book's full of them. Like, that's mm. why I found it such a great read, because especially for children, you know, it's great to hear all of these fabulous stories about the beautiful game, but so many of them are so inspiring, yeah. um, which I'm assuming is your hope for the book, to inspire the absolutely, next generation absolutely. and the next... It's just getting people, more and more young people involved yeah. and interested in, in what is the greatest sport of all. Beautiful game. Uh, another question from... Yes. Yes. I'm Noah and I'm oh. nine. I'm from Ashford. Oh. No, ten. And I'm from... <laughs> Have you... And I'm sure. from He's just grown up one year. <laughs> and um, my question is, um, what is your best and favourite goal that you scored? For I Gary. Get... Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, I didn't score many great goals. Um, they're mostly tap-ins. Um, I actually... 
think I will go with the first goal I scored at the 1986 World Cup, which was a game we had to win against Poland to get through the group stage. And it wasn't a particularly, it was a typical kind of poacher's goal, um, just running to gamble, <laughs> take a chance on where the ball would go, and it did, and I knocked it in. But I'd gone five or six goal, games without a goal for England, and we were under pressure and struggling, as was I, and, I, and Bobby Robson stuck with me, and I thought he'd leave me out. Um, and he brought in Peter Beardsley, and we gelled. And that first goal changed my life. Um, because before that I'd scored lots of goals in English football and a few for England but um, I think if I hadn't scored in that game I you know, probably never, might never have played for England again but I scored that one and then three minutes later I scored another one and then 15 minutes after that I scored a hat-trick and I'm going in at half time and I just thought, my God, what's happened? And then after that, I scored two goals in the next game, and then another one against... Uh, I got the other one that no-one remembers against Argentina. <laughs> uh, but, but it won me the golden boot. And then suddenly from... And, and then a week after that, I was signed by Barcelona. So the most important goal in my life is the most important goal, not necessarily the best. Can I ask you a question? I, I did score one long-range effort, though. <laughs> at, at Manchester bad. United. The only one I think I ever scored outside the box in the top <laughs> corner. I was also at, because as, as you may recall, I was at the World Cup in 86, and I was at that game. Do you, you remember marking me? That's why I scored a hat <laughs> Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do you remember where it was? What city? Uh, yes. Monterey. Oh, yeah, good. Just check. Well, I was there too. <laughs> no, I, yeah, yeah. But I can bear The game that changed my world. <laughs> I know, yeah. Yeah, no, it, was, it was great being there, I have to tell you. 50 times. 50 times. A game of football changed your world. It's a book in that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another book. <laughs> uh, oh, online, here, I've got someone from India. Jasper well, from India, yeah. aged eight. He asks, this is a good one. All my friends like cricket, as they do in India. Me too. How can I persuade them to play football more often with me? Oh. Oh, blind, I don't, I don't know. Either. Well, yeah. there is a chapter in the book, mm. um, and forgive me if I get the name wrong, but Baitung... Oh... Big one. Bai Chung, I can't remember his surname, but. But yeah, yeah. Who we've got, had the nickname the Sikkimese Sniper. He's one of the greatest ever yeah. Indian footballers, possibly not. He's possibly the Indian yeah. Gary Lineker, who's yeah. clearly a goal scorer. He's um, nodding over there, you know him. Know yeah, so him. there's a chapter in the book about him yeah. and his achievements, and he's, he played for India. 70 or possibly 80 times mm. he's one of their most famous ever players and since retiring he's set up some schools to help underprivileged children in India um, play football mm. um, and I know they've got a it's not really a battle because it's great to play any sport but clearly in that part of the world cricket is, is far more popular but I think in, uh, in places like that football is growing a little bit India hosted in 2017 was it the under 21 World mm. Cup or, or something like that. Um, so it's growing there. And the more, and Baitran came over and played here, played a few games for Berry. Um, and the more representation of players like that there are over here, the, yeah, you know, football is a global means, stars yeah. now. So yeah. if, if there's a global Indian just, footballer. I, I just tell him to keep playing. Just yeah. keep playing. You know. The great thing about football, you can, you can almost play. You know. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know, ask them maybe. Um, but they do love cricket. I love cricket, though. I used to play cricket yeah, a lot. Yeah, boy likes I know. football. I know, just keep, just keep taking a ball with you. Keep Someone will, eventually they'll want to join in. Yeah. You can't resist a ball, can you, ever? No, keep asking. Just keep taking the ball. Uh, another question from the audience. Um, I'm Sam, and I'm Patrick, and oh, we're telling you... I like <laughs> and we're ten-year-old twins from London, and we want to ask you this question: uh, What do you think about uh, the modern players' wages? I, I think they're wonderful. I think they're <laughs> just, it's just absolutely marvellous. Um, um, it, it's funny though, that because people say, "Oh, you must be." I mean, I'm, I'm defined, fine, but I, I, you, you just think you know they're earning zillions of pounds, and it all happened probably just after I finished. But. And people say, oh, you must be a bit, you know. But I said, but the only thing I'm envious about is, is the playing surfaces. <laughs> They're so beautiful. How can you ever miss? 
how can you ever miss on those? You know, we're clothes like bumping all over the place and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing is, football is, you know, it's huge. It's so global that the amount of, um, it's so competitive in terms of global TV rights and the incredible amounts of money that go in the game. And clubs are desperate to get the best players, so it ends up like an auction thing. So it, they're in a, you can never justify um, um, footballers' salaries. And, going just to find my own salary but um <laughs> but compared with people that do like really important jobs but um you know like nurses and doctors and you know the firing people and writers stuff. and um, well <laughs> <laughs> you do all right yeah. so um yeah so it, it's but but that's the going rate and that you know and if you're that good everyone's going to want you so it's just going to make it, it go big and it's just it's a huge box office business but it's funny though people always complain about or, or, or some people will complain about footballers salaries and stuff but no one ever talks about you know the movie stars or the big or rock the singers or the yeah, uh, yeah other channels yeah. <laughs> um, and mo you know movie stars or big singers or, or golfers or Formula One you know it's, it's but yeah. if it's a footballer and I think there's, a, there's an but essence they earn more no that no, they much don't more. What, no. the movie stars? Oh, movie stars. And star no, that's what I mean. But what it is, is it's because you're, if you're in the entertainment world, it, it's huge. But I think people will have a... You never hear people talking about salaries and other... But footballers, I think there's an essence there of working-class man does a little bit too well. And I think there's a, there's a degree of that in it. Yeah. It is nice in your book, though, mm. when some of these footballers do good things with well, their money. No, I mean, they do. The they do, they do. And there are lots, examples. Oh, yeah, of lots of examples. Well, there's, also, sorry, there's also a chapter yeah. in the book about Megan, Megan Rapino, the yeah. American footballer who campaigned for, I think it was about six or seven years to get mm. equal pay uh, for women in American uh, soccer. And finally, now they have got equal pay. Yeah. But I don't think that's true all around the world. I, I, I don't know if it's true here. Well, even. you've got to remember that in, in, in America, women's football has been significantly more successful yeah. than men's football. So, it, you know, and the thing is, would that happen here? Well, at the minute, you've not got equality between male footballers. Because, mm. you know, obviously the superstars will earn that much and then players in the championship and stuff will or yeah. League One don't earn very much at all. So it's, how do you I, say what's equal pay? Whereas in America, might, that's, it's, 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 it's I, a lot lower. I think you might be losing the kids slightly with this. Right. I agree, I agree. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's past their bedtime anyway. <laughs> Jimmy, age 11, this is an homework. online question. I'm gonna, another couple <laughs> of questions. Jimmy online, age 11, doesn't say where he's from. Um, do you play football with your kids, Gary, and are they any good? Not anymore, I don't. <laughs> I'm 61. <laughs> I played when they were growing up. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the middle two are quite, they're quite, they're not, I mean, they're all in, I'm going to say they're all in their 20s, but George is 31 now, so. Um, but um, they all played at various levels. Um, uh, but the middle two were, were, were these, Harry had trials for a couple of teams, and um, Tobias was in Chelsea's academy f for a few years, and then he had um, this knee issues, oh. both knees, he couldn't play for two and a half years. But I don't think he would have been quite that level. So, but they, you know, they love football. But I play with them in the garden. But that's about it. I think that's what he means. I think that. That's oh no, what Jimmy definitely means. that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and another question from the audience over there at the back, please. Hello, my name is Arthur. I'm 12 from Harpenden. And do you think Leicester are going to win the league again? Well, the I... championship next season, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, no, no, they'll never win the league again. No, Leicester are now back to being Leicester. Um, I, I, that's why it was such a miracle, because it, it, it couldn't happen. It, was, it's not, it wasn't possible, but it did. But no, they'll never, never win, not that league, not the Premier League, no, no. Another from the audience, please. Hello, my name's Jacob, I'm from Cambridge, and I have a question for Gary. There you are, yeah, good to see you. Do you think Harry Kane is good enough to beat your record of 10 goals in a World Cup? Well, he could do. I mean, he's got six because he got he was the top scorer at the last World Cup. Um, so if he gets five, he goes ahead of me, and I hope he does because if he gets five, that means England have got a really, really good chance. And I'd much sure. and the great thing people always used to say, you know, when you scored, you know, when I because I was just behind Bobby Charlton and stuff, forty-eight. But whenever, like when Wayne Rooney's sort of creeping towards your tally, or uh, latterly Harry Kane, who's now gone past it as well. 
people used to say, oh, I must be, you must be really miffed that they've gone past your... And I said, no, it actually reminds people, because they keep bringing up these graphics. Of you, in the, it actually reminds people that I'm not a bloke that just eats crisps <laughs> I, and talks about football. I actually used to play the game. So, it rem, I suspect, you know, the, young, the youngsters, they go, oh, that's, that's the fa- he's on that list. So it's a, it's a good thing, and I hope he does it. But he, I think he's, he could definitely... Mm-hmm. Might probably uh, will he get another World Cup? Mm, maybe, but he'll probably have to do it this time. And one more from the audience. I'm really sorry, but yes, back. Who would be your dream team for England? Who would be your dream team? Dream team? Did you say? Who would be? Her, your... her question was, um, what would be your dream team, <laughs> dream team if you if you was to have a team? What would be your team, your dream team for England? Who would you have in your squad? Oh blimey, can't go through the whole squad now. Oh. I mean, quite. <laughs> <laughs> nice got, quick one then. Um, yeah, we got we're, we're about a month away, aren't we? So we've got we've got a few injuries suddenly, which is a bit worrying. But um, but also some of them are coming to on a really good form. I think it's difficult for Gaz because he's, he's he's kind of in some positions he's really sport for choice. We've got you know lots of. You know, midfield and uh, from midfield forward, it's great. Fullbacks strong, although all our right backs are suddenly injured. Um, but it's it, it must it must be hard um, for Gareth. You know, we and, and we all have our own view. I think what we should do is just. I mean, they've been through a bit of a rocky spell, but I think what we need to do is get behind Gareth now and the team. Not. You know, we'll all have a you know we'll all have a thing. Oh, he should be in the squad, and he should. And I'm, I'm as guilty as anyone is doing that because we're all football fans. But I think what Gareth has done in the last four years is earn the right to either fail or succeed, and he's earned that right. And I think we'll I think the, we'll all get behind him again because he's been he's been he's been marvellous as an England mm. manager. So and that's, we'll get behind we're him, won't that. we? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you to all of you. You've been absolutely brilliant. Thank you for some superb questions, you guys. They were really, really good. Thank you to Gary. Thank you to Ivor. Unfortunately, we're out of time. I don't know about you, but it seems to have flown by. You know what they say when you're having fun. Um, Just a couple of housekeeping things. If you haven't got your hands on a a book, uh, 50 times football changed the world, it's out now. Surprise, surprise. And if you'd like a signed copy, they're for sale in the foyer. So pick one up before they're you They're cheaper. <laughs> ah, and they're cheaper. No, they're not. No, no they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't confuse me. Uh, and yeah, thank you for all of you that have joined yeah. online. I'm sorry I couldn't yeah. get through all of the questions. And sorry I couldn't get to yeah. all of your questions either. But you've been a fantastic audience. And a big round of applause for Ivor and Gary. Thank you.